welcome to March. February is finally over, which is awesome. I always say it has the shortest amount of days because it sucks the most. Did you know more people kill themselves in the month of February than any other month, which is why, thank goodness, it's the shortest month, but then also why I felt it was super important in March to have this reading center around our happiness, okay? So there are a lot of reasons why people watch these videos, but at the very core of it, I think that people are watching because they want some good news, right? They want something to look forward to. In the uh, words of Omar Suleiman, a very wise guy, he says that the keys to happiness are three things. Something to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. So hopefully, I'm gonna give you all of those in this reading. So, um, even if your life is already full of joy and happiness and bliss, if you're just wanting to hear some validation about these good vibes that you're already feeling, that you know, to hear you're already on the right path, that you're making the right choices, the right decisions for that sense of security, security does bring happiness, right? Knowing what to expect. At the end of the day, happiness is what we're all seeking. It's the reason why we seek out help, why we would use a tarot reader, why we would look up our horoscope. This is why we're doing this, okay? We are fiends for happiness. It's the ultimate drug and so this is what we're focusing on in uh, March so this will be for your Sun moon or rising sign uh, a lot of times because of our moon sign correlates to our emotions and how we feel which is a lot of times why we make the decisions we make that might resonate a little bit better for you so um, it might be advisable to watch your moon sign as well as your Sun sign and then you could do your rising sign as well too if you'd like to um, what did I want to say okay so since we're focusing on happiness for March and how to kind of sustain that throughout the year this is how we're gonna look at it we're gonna do um, where are you at right now what is tainting any feelings of happiness that you otherwise should have right now what will make you feel happy or at least what you think will um, how is that perception true how is that perception false um, what will actually make you the most happy this month and then we're gonna look at the forces that are kind of outside of your control right, that is affecting this state, and um, which ones that are not really within your power are kind of accelerating your happiness, and then which ones are decelerating that. Um, we're going to look at what's going to bring you luck this month, your crystal of the month, your color energy, your lucky days, and then also any energies that you need to kind of bring into your life in order to help the happiness thrive, how to sustain the happiness once you get some, and then just kind of like a recap or overall nutshell of what March will look like for your sign. So um, kind of thinking about, you know, okay, well, is this reading going to be enough because it's for each specific zodiac sign, each sign has their own. Then I was thinking, um, those of you who have followed me for a long time might remember stop, drop, roll readings, uh, where it's something that you stop doing, something you drop from your life, and something you should roll with. I think I'm going to do a special on those, but um, really kind of amped up or accelerated in order to um, really harness in on that happiness sort of life coaching aspect. And the reason why I think this is important in March is because number one, it's the perfect time for spring cleaning, right? Uh, number two, the popularity of Marie Kondo right now and, you know, sort of thinking about let's get rid of the things that don't bring me joy. Let's just focus on the things that bring me joy and, you know, we all are always looking for joy. We're either trying to increase pleasure or decrease pain. And so that's kind of the purpose of this reading. And then here's the other thing. We're about to step into this Mercury retrograde. We're in the pre-shadow period right now as I record this. And so then when it hits us, um, in order to use this time in its fullest potential, we want to very much evaluate, okay, this isn't working for me. I wanna pitch this and I wanna do something that's gonna make my life better. It's gonna make me happier. It's gonna make me more joyful, more satisfied with life. And so um, I think I'm going to offer that like in sort of a goals and coaching, very intensive sort of way as a special. Um, once I decide to do that, if you're on the email list, um, I only send one email a month, so don't let that be a reason why you're not on my list. Um, then 
you'll be notified of that. And if there's like a coupon code or something that would be in there, uh, if you're not on the list, you should be because I give away, like I said, it's only one email a month, but I, every single month I give away a free 20 minute, um, video reading to uh, a random person selected from my list. So that being said, um, I'm sorry if this long intro did not bring you joy, if it decreased your happiness, but now you know what to expect in your reading. So let's get started. Hey Pisces, welcome to March. Okay, so where are you at right now? They're saying right now. You are thinking about your past a little bit, somewhat nostalgically, and it's not like you want to go backwards and put any work into, you know, fixing things from the past, relationships from the past, but you might be kind of viewing things with rose-colored lenses. Totally normal when we're about to start a Mercury retrograde. Um, what's tainting any feelings you have of happiness right now? And they are saying, well, actually, you know what, you're pretty emotionally balanced this month. Um... And I'm not saying that Pisces typically aren't, but you know your your feelings can kind of go one way and then the other way, somewhat um, erratically or in extreme, uh, per the perception of other zodiac signs. And so you know it's definitely not like a bipolar energy, but it's kind of like you're a really deep feeler, and so when you feel your feelings, other people might go, whoa, that's a little intense for this situation, or you maybe shift and change your mind really quickly, like it's no big deal for you, and other people are like, what the fudge? Um, so anyway, they're saying you're actually feeling really balanced and okay with any endings that have happened, so not much is tainting your feeling of happiness right now, except for this feeling of boredom. Like there's nothing exciting to really give your energy to, um, and you're very much in control of things right now, but it's just like you're bored, okay? And so that might be something that sort of toys with your happiness in the month of March, but other than that, I think you're all right. Um, what, what do you think will make you happy in the month of March? And they're saying, um, you know, some of you are kind of of this mindset that you're not going to be particularly happy until you have a certain level of success, wealth, money, that sort of thing. Um, so how is this perception true? And they go, well, like this is a perception that you've had for a really long time that hasn't really changed. And so it's sort of become your truth. But how is this perception that you have false? And they're saying, well, like, honestly, it's, just false because happiness doesn't come from money. Now, what it does do is it does eliminate a lot of the problems that cause us stress and arguments and things like that when we're in flight or fight mode, um, you know, with other people in our lives because we're just going on the day to day and we can't think in advance because we're just trying to friggin' survive, right? They're like, you're not really wrong there that if you have a certain level of financial or job security, that things do get easier, okay? So um, some of you are not wrong, but then others of you, like, it's a little bit wrong, <laughs> but for the most part, I think you guys have a pretty good grasp on what it is that you think is going to make you happy and um, somewhat how to achieve that, right? So what is actually going to make you the most happy in this month? And they say, you know, really, it is about that balance, getting your ducks in a row. Um, maybe, you know, if you haven't done your taxes yet, do them in March instead of waiting until April, because the sooner that you have your ducks in a row and everything sort of balanced out, the sooner you're going to feel a lot more joy and comfort. Um, for you, it seems like this month is a little bit more about feeling safe and secure uh, throughout the month, knowing that things are going well. This is a good time to maybe buy life insurance or something like that. That will bring you a lot of joy, actually, that you didn't anticipate. Um, so what are the forces at play that are outside of your control in favor of your happiness? And they go, well, things haven't really changed. Um, you know, there's not a lot of things moving and shifting in your life right now that are outside of your control. And so that works to your benefit, actually. Um, it means that you get to sort of decide 
which direction you want to go, how you want to head um, in life, you know, which path you want to go down, what you want to keep doing, what you want to stop doing, blah, blah, blah. And basically, you get to determine how you are going to feel this month. Now, I know that sounds silly, like, oh, I don't get to just decide if I'm going to be happy or sad. Um, you kind of do. It is annoying when you're depressed and somebody's like, happiness is a choice, right? But is a little true. Um, the thing is, is we get to decide how we're going to frame things. We don't get to control the thoughts that we have, but we get to control which ones we're going to wholeheartedly believe and um, really focus on. And so the more that you focus on the ones that are positive, you know, let's say you had a horrible breakup. Okay, well, thank goodness I didn't end up in um, a longer term relationship in a marriage with children with somebody who's a fucking asshole who cheats all the time right? Thank goodness I found that out now. And now I have more time to find the right person for me instead of being like sad about the lack or the loss, you know? And if you're single and you want to be coupled, it's like, thank goodness I'm not with the wrong partner. Thank goodness I haven't wasted 20 years of my life with the wrong person, completely unsatisfied, but feeling stuck. Okay. So there's always a different way that you can frame this in order to feel more positive about it. Um, what forces are outside of your control uh, that are kind of working against your happiness this month? And they say um, defeat, exhaustion, and anxiety about the future. So how can you reduce your anxiety? And they're saying, well, you know what? It's honestly really going to just be about focusing on the positive. Like, okay, so you see this guy here? He had five cups. And three of them spilled over and they tipped out, but he still got two. And like, yeah, he's sad, but he's protecting those two. You need to do everything you can to guard your own happiness. So I read an article once about this woman. And she was like super overwhelmed with work. She had a really stressful job and then she'd come home and like immediately it was her husband asking her questions and it was her kids asking her this and that and whatever. So her solution to increase her happiness because she never had alone time was to just take a scarf and wear it on her neck and she would come in the house. She would maybe smile or wave at her family and she goes straight to her room and she would sit in her room and just like decompress for a minute, maybe meditate, maybe read a book for 30 minutes, but she would do this every day and everybody knew that they were not allowed to bother her until she would take her scarf off. And so, you know, she was making time for herself. She was really focusing on protecting her own joy and happiness. And as a result, her family was much happier because she was not yelling anymore. She was not snippy. She was not, you know, um, impulsively responding to them out of anger. You know, when um, kids, they're so excited to see you and they might be climbing on you. She's like, oh, you know, let me just like put my stuff down. Like, let me just take a deep breath. But she could go have her time, decompress for, you know, 30 minutes and then come and join her family and then really embrace her children and hug them and actively listen to how their day was. And her relationships got better. Her um, emotional health got better. Everything got better. And so this is something that you definitely want to do. It, there's, you need to really kind of build this force field around the things that bring you joy and continue to do those things. And, um, you know, assert boundaries if other people are going to infringe upon that. Okay, so uh, what's going to bring you luck this month? Well, your lucky day this month is the 9th of March. And then um, your color ray energy of the month is blue. And it says activating your healing power. So with this, you see how it's a number three, seven. So it's a divinely guided number a number of the ascended masters, like they're going to be here to help you heal, to heal others as well with this blue energy. Um, so what this seven means is like sevens are about expansion. And so, you know, the way, because this correlates to the throat chakra, the way that you're communicating with others is actually going to touch them very deeply this month. Um, it's going to kind of plant a seed inside of people. Little things that you say, you didn't even notice probably that it was going to make a big difference in their life. But it's the seed that's planted that grows and blooms into this beautiful tree um, that actually heals. And so you're also planting this in yourself and the way that you talk to yourself this month is going to expansively heal you. 
Um, so this specific color, this deeper shade of blue, you want to just kind of imagine it coming over your head or directly into your throat chakra. Um, you can surround yourself in a big imaginary bubble of blue light. You can wear this color. Um, you know, whatever. This is your power color for the month. Now, this one is really great at calming anxiety, which we kind of said might be a little bit of a thing this month for Pisces. Um, and it really balances out uh, bipolar type of energies. So again, I know this keeps coming up. Maybe there's got to be a Pisces here that really needs to see this video this month that is bipolar because I don't know why that word specifically keeps coming up. But anyway, um, it'll kind of temper like manic energies and like really excited energies um, and bring them back to the baseline. And then it also takes depressive energies and brings them up to the baseline. And so it's going to help you feel a lot more even. And when we're feeling more even emotionally, like I said, it's going to be a lot easier to balance out your work-life balance or your finances, getting your ducks in a row, like I said. So um, the really cool thing about this color is it actually will help you balance out things like metabolism as well if you use this. So um, the way you want to use this, I was going to look up the affirmation. They say, um, blue sort of light, heal, purify, and regenerate my body, my mind, and my soul. Um, you can use this also, like, if you think about your hands, you open up your hand chakras, okay? Um, I don't really know how to describe that without doing, like, a longer video on this. Uh, but anyway, if... If you can kind of feel like the chakras in your hands opening up and like light coming through, you just touch whichever part of your body hurts. And then you would say, you know, thank you for healing my shoulders or thank you for healing my head. Or you can even just imagine a color ray kind of touching those areas. Oftentimes before I go to bed, I will scan my body with a gray color ray and I'll figure out where is there like tension or congestion. And then I'll use the blue one, um, to heal that so that when I wake up, I feel really refreshed. Okay. So anyway, that is your color energy for the month. And then your, unsurprisingly, your crystal of the month is blue calcite. Again, with that throat chakra, but again, inviting these feelings of, um, you know, calm, ease. This helps you feel like you are, you know, kind of, I guess, Moving towards your highest good. It helps you to release negativity. It um, increases your ability to communicate clearly, which we know is going to be important because the things that you say this month are very, very impactful to the people that you say them to. Um, this is actually going to very well help you in like channeling. So if you're also a tarot card reader, if you're some sort of a medium or you're just, you know, kind of intuitive, this will actually support you in that. Um, let's see. It'll balance out male and female energies. Um, it kind of prevents laziness. It quiets the mind, eases fears. Um, it does a lot of stuff. So anyway, you can learn more about this at my website. Uh, there's a link in the description box below. And you can also get your own there. So also with all of the crystals that I sell on my website, they come with like a video series that tells you all these different ways you can use crystals and care for them. So if that's something you're interested in, even if it's not the blue calcite, it's worth checking out. Educational. Okay, so then back to your reading. Um, let's see. What kind of energies do you need to bring into your life to help you live happily? And they're like, you know what, honestly, it's not about the law of attraction or what you're manifesting this month for you. Um, for you this month, it's more about like saying, okay, like I can view the past. Like, you know, bad things happened sometimes, but like I can view those in a positive light. Kind of like I talked about earlier in the reading when I was like, okay, you can choose to look at this breakup one way or a different way. Like everything that happens to us, um, you know, it's, it's really hard. It's hard to wrap your head around the fact that like nothing that happens to us is bad, right? It's either good or it's good for us. In like these huge surveys of like, people who went through like really horrible, traumatizing things, if they asked like these people who were like enslaved, who were raped, who were this, like all these really bad, bad things, they asked them what was 
the worst thing that happened to you and then what was the best thing that happened to you? And I think it was something insane, like 97% said the same exact thing. Why? Because if this bad thing didn't happen, they would not have changed course. They would not have worked on their personal growth. They would not be where they are today. And so, you know, okay, so you could make the argument, how could a miscarriage be something good? There's no fucking way you can you can say that this was a good thing. Okay, well, actually, um, what that does is that makes you like really investigate your relationship. Like, how are you going to deal with stressors? Because it's probably stressful for both parties involved because there's two parents, right? But then on top of that, it's also going to um, be something that will help you to bond and connect with other people. Maybe friends who are going through miscarriages down the road will be able to deepen their bonds and friendships with you as you offer them support and guidance or wisdom. Um, maybe, you know, you create some sort of nonprofit or some sort of support group for people who really need it as a result of this because you know what it feels like because you're able to empathize. And so it doesn't feel good. The circumstance seems really super shitty. But something good will always come out of it. There is always a silver lining on every single dark cloud, right? Okay, like, for example, sometimes the clouds can cover the sun, right? And it looks really gloomy. But eventually, the sun is so strong, that love and that light is so strong, it will break apart the clouds. Like, the sun is never gone forever. Light still peeks through even the darkest ones, right? Okay, so... Um, I want to see what is the best way for you, like, on a spiritual kind of vibe, like, what is the best modality in order to increase your happiness and your focus with that? And um, so they're saying, again, it's not the law of attraction for you guys this month. It just isn't. Um, they say it's actually prayer and through sleep and dreams. So um, maybe some of you don't pray. Okay, pay attention to your dreams. Write them down in the morning and then see later in the afternoon if you can figure out what the hell those were about. Um, you could look up or read about what dream meanings are, different things like that. That's going to be very revealing for you. Um, and, you know, you could also pray right before bed that maybe you are given answers or guidance in your dreams. So that'd be cool. You could ask with your Blu-ray of light that they heal anything inside that is coming up from your subconscious and presenting itself in the dream. Or that you get the answers to how to solve problems that come up in your dreams. Um, and you could even put the blue calcite under your pillow. That would be like super optimal. Okay, um, how can you sustain happiness once you get it? And they go, so again, not so much about like manifesting and like visualizing yourself being happy and stuff like that. It's just like about deciding, you know what? I'm happy today. I am thankful for all these good things in my life. I decide to smile and, you know, like my psychology follows my physiology. I am super positive. I'm really happy. It's my fucking birthday month. Yay. And so, I mean, I guess for most Pisces, it's your birthday month, right? Maybe some of you were born in February. Anyway. For a lot of you. It's your birthday month, so you should be happy. You should be joyful. You just choose joy, okay? Um, so I know that that reading was quite long, which might sort of um, lower <laughs> your joy. Uh, but, and maybe a little bit redundant, but I do think it's important that a lot of you sort of know, you know, like here are the things I need to focus on. Blue and the throat chakra are a bajillion times um, your energies or your vibes this month, like things to focus on. Because like I said, what you're communicating to other people is going to expand. So make sure that that's positive and inspirational and, you know, motivational and things like that. Because um, we're planting seeds in people this month as a Pisces. Everything that you're communicating verbally is going to make an impact and we want it to be positive, right? Okay, so March, in a nutshell, what do they want to say? And they say, well, you already know. 
You already know. Um, there are a few things that you haven't learned the entire lesson on, which might pop up during the Mercury retrograde. Some things that you haven't moved on from. But it's not going to be a dramatic thing because you've come to this place of greater emotional balance than before and where this whole month of March is about finding balance between masculine and feminine energies, between work and life, in your financial areas. And this month is a very productive month even though it might not seem that way sometimes because in a retrograde, you know, we experience delays. And so... This month really seems like, you know, when you're watching a TV show and like the beginning of a new season might have like three or four episodes that are just so freaking boring and you're like, why do I even watch this show? I like the last few seasons, but this season is so dull. I don't even want to watch this show anymore. But then when you get to that fifth and sixth episode, your fucking head explodes and you're like, oh my God, this is my favorite show ever. I love this even more than ever before. And you know why? Because those were building. <laughs> those first four episodes were like setting the scene, laying the foundation. And that's kind of what marches for you. It's like laying the foundation, getting everything balanced and in order. So all of a sudden, poof. All of these miracles of joy and happiness and everything you ever wanted show up. And I think that's why they're saying it's not about what you're attracting this month. It's not about setting goals. It's getting the environment right so that everything we want will just naturally flow to us. It's choosing happiness and joy and creating that space for everything that we want to just kind of pour through. And so um, maybe a little bit boring, but very important because you are setting the scene for this gigantic and amazing, like happy tears kind of shit um, energy to flow into you and in you know into your life and your situation and circumstance in the following months. So happy birthday, I love you so much. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!